Hello, this is James Pickles, Fast and Safeti product owner. In a previous series of videos, my colleague Mike Johnson explains how to import a single geo-referenced image into Fast or Safeti, and then how to export consequence plots to Google Earth. If you haven't already watched these those videos, then please do so. In this video, I'm going to explain how to import multiple geo-referenced images into Fast or Safeti. And the images that I'm going to import will be taken from this open source third party software, QGIS. Um, you might be using different GIS software to this, some, maybe something like ArcGIS. Um, but in this example, we will use the open source software. And we're going to take some screenshots of um, this location of the world here, which is in Belgium. And I'm going to take two zoom levels of screenshots. So one screenshot will be from the zoom level that we can see now. And then after I've done that one, I will zoom in a bit closer to this facility just in the middle of the map. We'll zoom in a bit closer, take a second screenshot, and then we will, we will import both of those maps into Safeti. So before we do that, we need to go to the Fast or Safeti software and then on the settings tab we need to define a coordinate system to use so in this example here i'm going to use a projection coordinate system so i select projection here and then on the projection space tab i can choose from a number of projection algorithms you must choose the the right projection algorithm for your particular application and for, for your particular part of the world. There's many to choose from. Obviously, I can't go through um, all of these, um, but in this example, I'm going to use the Universal Transverse Mercator projection algorithm, which is quite a common one. And then on the projection parameters, I need to specify whether the map that I'm going to take is in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. Um, this particular one is in the Northern Hemisphere. And then I also need to choose the relevant zone. So the relevant zone for this particular area of the world is zone 31. Now you might be asking, how do you determine which is the relevant zone? So if you do a, a Google search for something like, um, tell me which UTM zone I am in. Um, you'll come across various websites um, that will give you some guidance on this. This is one website that I'm using here and we can see that the UTM projection algorithm splits the world up into a number of, uh, a number of columns. And this particular facility, which is in Belgium, is within this column here. So if I just click on this column, then this particular website tells me that this part of the world is UTM zone 31. So you can use a website like this to determine the relevant UTM zone for your application. Then we can go to the QGIS software and before we take some screenshots we need to make sure that the coordinate system defined in the GIS software is the same coordinate system as that that we've defined within FAST or Safeti. So within QGIS to do that you can just go to the bottom right of the software, click this icon here and then in the list of coordinate reference systems you can select the relevant one. In this example, it's WGS 84 slash UTM zone 31 Northern Hemisphere. So you can select that projection system. If you don't select the same projection system as what's been defined in FAST or Safeti, then you will find that when you import the images into FAST or Safeti, you will get an error message. So the coordinate systems must match. And then we can take some uh, screenshots of this. So if we choose the, the zoom level that we want for the map, and then we go to the project menu, import slash export, and then we have this option here to export the map to image. We click that, 
click save and then you must save it as a TIFF format, a TIFF format. A TIFF format is a, an image format that has some geo-reference um, properties contained within it. So we save it as a TIFF format, format and then I'm just going to call it example image and then I'm going to call it zoom level one. So example image zoom one, save. And then I can zoom in a bit closer and go to project, import, export, export map to image, save. And then I'm going to call this one example zoom two. So we've saved two images, one that's zoomed out and one that's zoomed in. And then we're going to import these into Fast or Safeti. And we will see that Fast or Safeti will automatically scale the images and it will automatically put the images in the right place on the map such that when the second image is overlaid on top of the first image, then they will line up perfectly. And if you import images that aren't geo-referenced, um, to, to get the scale right for the images can be a challenge. And it can also be particularly challenging to get one image lined up on top of or next to another one. So if we use geo-referenced images, then the process is perfect and we don't need to be so concerned with scale and getting things lined up. So we will see that now. So going back to Savetti on the map tab, insert raster image, browse to the location of the images, select TIFF as the file format, select the first one, example image zoom one, click open. And then in this placement mode here, make sure that you select geo-referenced. If you select interactive, you will have to place the map, uh, the image on the map in the right place and you'll have to do the, your own scaling. If you select geo-referenced, then the process is completely automatic. So click OK and then go to fit all. We can now see the map. And like I say, this is placed within the canvas in the exact place that it should be as per the defined coordinate system. And then if we insert the second image, again, TIFF as the format, example image zoom two, click open. Again, make sure you select geo-referenced, click OK, and then that will import the second image. And then in this key here on the left of the GIS import window, um, if you just drag the second image on top of the first image or above the first one in the list and keep your focus in the center of the map, you will notice that the, as I drag that above the example image zoom one in the list, you will see the map just ever so slightly flicker. There, hopefully you saw that. If I just try that again, so drag in the second one, which is zoomed in on top of the first one, then we can just see it flicker. So what we're looking at here is the second image overlaid on top of the first image. And then we can see the border of the second image as well here. And then if we zoom in, we can see that here. So the, the second image has relatively good resolution when we zoom in. And then the first image, um, which is behind the second image, we can see that to the left of this turquoise line, the resolution isn't so great when we, when we zoom in. And that's because that screenshot was taken off. Um, it was taken when we were zoomed much further out. So as you'd expect, when you zoom in, the resolution isn't going to be as good. Um, and we can see that the maps perfectly line up. Um, so we can just see this road here is lined up. Um, we can see that this field lines up perfectly. Let's just try some other parts of the map just to demonstrate that. We can see here this road comes down and then just comes down here. The 
these trees here we can just see the border of these trees is is perfectly lined up and this um, sort of brown patch of of land here is it's all perfectly lined up and that's because we've imported two geo referenced images using the same uh, coordinate system both of these images are scaled perfectly you don't need to go through the process of scaling the images and as we can see both images are lined up perfectly so hopefully you can see the benefits of using this approach importing geo referenced images and hopefully that will make the whole process of importing maps much easier to do thank you for listening and if you have any questions or would like to get in touch please email digital at dnvgl.com